Hi, happy Poetry Day. It's uh, not a Friday today. It's a very warm Sunday. And maybe it's going to be a hot day when you hear this. Today we're going to focus on action poems, poems that show people doing something that grabs our attention. And we've already talked a bit about how action can reveal character. Just as an example, you could write a poem about two people washing windows, you know, scraping off the specks of gunk and polishing the glass till it sparkles. And maybe one person works really fast, sloppy. Uh, the other person takes more time. Uh, maybe one really cares about being able to see clearly. So he wants the glass clean and the other person doesn't care. Uh, so dirty window is no big deal. Often when you write about an action, it gives you ideas. You know, what does it mean to look at the world through dirty windows? I used to have these dark glasses that uh, put this strange kind of rainbow effect into my field of vision sometimes. And I often felt like the world looked better through those glasses than it did without them in real life. And I really loved those glasses. Um, but any action uh, can potentially reveal something about the person who's doing it. The first poem I'm going to read today is called Walking the Trestle. So it's good to know what a trestle is. Uh, a trestle is a kind of bridge uh, that's made up of kind of crisscrossing uh, bars or pieces of metal so that there's a lot of space between the bars. I've done a really, uh, what should we call this drawing? <laughs> Beautiful? I don't know. A very simple drawing, but of that kind of crisscross effect of a trestle bridge so that when you're on a trestle, you're, there's not much between you and the air below. Another thing that's good to know in this poem, it refers to the Susquehanna. And the Susquehanna is a river. And so picture this person going out on this trestle with this river far below. Walking the trestle. They are all behind you, grinning with their eyes like dollars. Their shouts of dare you, dare you, dare you, broken by the wind. You squint ahead where the rusty trestle wavers into the sky like a pirate's plank. And sun shines darkly on the Susquehanna, 40 feet below. You stretch your arms to the sides of space and walk like a groom down that bare aisle. Out in the middle, you turn to wave and see their faces breaking like bubbles, the waves beneath you flashing coins, and all around you chittering cables, birds, and the bright air clapping. So this is where I ask, what did you notice about the poem? Anything that you particularly like, anything that confuses you. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Um, why do you think the poem says eyes like dollars? And I think of silver dollars, you know, the, the, the coin that's larger than a quarter. You don't see them very often. Uh, and then it says, waves beneath you, flashing coins. So to put it another way, why do you think this person is walking out on this trestle? And I've read the poem several times, 
And the idea it gives me is that maybe someone made a bet. They, they're daring this person to go out on the trestle, but also if he or she does go out there, they're going to win this bet. And then another question I have about the poem is what's the effect of using you? Like the poem could say, they are all behind me. And it could say, I do this, I do that. Or it could say, they are all behind him. He does this. And it could say, it could say they are all behind her. Or she does this. So think about the effect of using you in a poem. It might be something you want to try in your poem today. Um, and how do you think the person feels as they're walking along the trestle? Uh, the poem gives some hints uh, uh, to show both the fear, like it says, the rusty, rusty trestle wavers like a pirate's plank. You know, when you have to walk the plank, the pirate's plank, it's usually to your death. And so that's something that the person is thinking about. And at the end of the poem, it says the bright air clapping. Well, air doesn't really clap, but the person is imagining the applause, which makes you think maybe the person feels really good about having done this. I'm going to read it again, just so you can get the effect after thinking about these things. Walking the trestle, they are all behind you, grinning with their eyes like dollars, their shouts of dare you, dare you, dare you, broken by the wind. You squint ahead where the rusty trestle wavers into sky like a pirate's plank. And sun shines darkly on the Susquehanna, 40 feet below. You stretch your arms to the sides of space and walk like a groom down that bare aisle. Out in the middle, you turn to wave and see their faces breaking like bubbles, the waves beneath you flashing coins, and all around chittering cables, birds, and the bright air clapping. So here's another poem. The, the voice is very different in this poem. It's about roller skating. It's called 74th Street. Hey, this little kid gets roller skates. She puts them on. She stands up and almost flops over backwards. She sticks out a foot like She's going somewhere and falls down and smacks her hand. She grabs hold of a step to get up and sticks out the other foot and slides about six inches and falls and skins her knee. And then, you know what? She brushes off the dirt and the blood and puts some spit on it and then sticks out the other foot again. And if you look at the poem, it does something kind of interesting. It, it sets that last word again off. It's like it's a whole separate stanza, and it puts it in italics. Um, so I have a couple of questions about that poem. Why do you think the poet would start the poem with, hey? Hey! And why do you think the poet would put that word again all on its own and really draw attention to it. What do you think the poet is trying to reveal about that person in the poem? Uh, the other thing I'll say is that the poem has really good verbs. Flops, falls, smacks, grabs. Those are one syllable words that make you move your mouth. And uh, that kind of word with a lot of Texture is always good to use in a poem. Um, the standard advice for anyone writing a story is show, don't tell. We've talked about that a little bit before. If I'm writing a story about a character who trusts everyone, I could just tell you 
uh, Red, that's the name of the character, Red trusted everyone. But the story grabs your attention more if I show you Red all dressed up in her little riding hood, walking through the forest with her basket of goodies, uh, and this wolf shows up, uh, this thinly disguised wolf, who asks her all kinds of nosy questions, and Red answers every question in the nicest way. You know, when the writer shows Red, readers draw their own conclusions about her, uh, and those conclusions carry more weight than something that the storyteller just tells you. Um, so some people who hear the story may think Red is nice. Some people may think she's foolish. Some people may think she's adventurous. And when you write a poem about someone, it's great if different people who read the poem or hear the poem can come to different conclusions. Uh, and action can mean more than any one single explanation. Uh, here's another poem that involves roller skates. Uh, it's called The Rider. A boy told me if he roller skated fast enough, his loneliness couldn't catch up to him. The best reason I ever heard for trying to be a champion. What I wonder tonight, pedaling hard down King William Street, is if it translates to bicycles. A victory to leave your loneliness panting behind you on some street corner while you float free into a cloud of sudden azaleas, luminous pink petals that have never felt loneliness, no matter how slowly they fell. Well, there are a couple of interesting things going on in this poem, I think. Um, there's both telling and showing. So first, the poet just kind of tells the idea of roller skating fast enough that your loneliness can't catch up with you. And then she wonders if that idea applies to her, and she shows you what it's like to, roll, to ride her bicycle as fast as she can. And she gives this image of you know, riding through these flowers. Uh, I don't think she's riding over the flowers. I think she's riding by the flowers. But the, the pink petals kind of come up into the air and float slowly. Um, what do you think she's trying to reveal about the poet herself or the, the character in the poem who is called I? Uh, what is the poem make you think about that person. So we've had a poem about you, a poem about she, and a poem about I. Those are all possibilities for your poem. But what action could you write about? Uh, I once saw a person reach into someone's back pocket, pull out the other person's wallet, and put a $10 bill into the wallet and then slip the wallet back in the person's pocket. And that action seemed like a great one for a story or a poem uh, because you think you know what's going on when the person takes the wallet out. Uh, and then you find out it's something else entirely. Uh, when you figure out the action you want to describe, think about a surprise that you can put with it. I'm going to read a couple of quick poems from classes before yours. These are all by fifth graders. Maybe I'll just read two of them. Uh, one's called The Bungee Jump. I see myself as a wimp. I want to prove myself something heroic, dangerous. I raise my head and I see it. Bungee Jump. The next day I show up at the bridge. I'm as scared as a zebra being chased by a lion, an elephant faced with a mouse, a child in the dark. I pay them and they put me in a harness. 
It feels cold through my t-shirt, like ice cubes on my chest. When I step on the bridge, I tell myself, if I die, no one will care. So I jump. I feel like I am plummeting to my death. When I see the river coming towards me, I close my eyes in fear. I bounce up and down and up and down until I stop. I open my eyes. I'm alive. The fear is replaced by something else, something warm. I climb the ladder, a man. And this is a poem called Gardening. Kneeling on my knees, they already ache from kneeling so long. I tend to my garden. I breathe in the air. The oxygen is an angel. The carbon dioxide is a devil. It's the opposite for plants. The splash of clear water hitting the rich dark earth under my nails is a home for dirt, slimy wriggly worms sitting on my hands. My neighbor comes out. She has a garden too. We have a little conversation. We use happy words. We smile and laugh. We ask questions. We're curious, but don't ask about private matters. Boy, I love the surprise at the end of that poem. Um, now it's your turn. Try to think of an action. Uh, think about what you can reveal. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing your poem. So hope you have a good week.